Hi, today I'd like to speak about flax seeds. My name is Dr. McLaughlin from Sharon Mac Wellness. I help women going through menopause with weight management, with nutrition and mindset. So flax seeds, what's so important about them? There's a number of different factors, so I'd like to cover that to, on today's video. For one thing, they're filled with fiber. And I know I've spoken about this a lot, but fiber is a great thing. With flax seeds, there's insoluble fiber and soluble fiber. Insoluble, our bodies don't absorb it but it helps prevent constipation and it helps remove waste from our intestines. Soluble, our bodies do absorb that fiber, but that's really good because it helps with our gut bacteria and it helps prevent inflammation. The fiber itself, it acts as a prebiotic and that's why those, our gut bacteria, it feeds them. So that's how that works. As far as weight loss goes, there was one study in particular. What they did was they gave lifestyle changes to one group and then another group, it was lifestyle changes plus flax seeds. Now, when we're talking about flax seeds, it's important to know that they come whole or they come ground. Most of us, we can't absorb the whole, whole flax seeds, so we need to ground them. So back to the study. So they had the lifestyle changes and they had flax seeds. And over a few weeks, what did the study show? Well, actually both groups lost. So we know that lifestyle changes can make a difference as far as weight loss goes. But in addition to that, there's some accountability there. They had somebody looking over their shoulder. They knew that people would be looking at their end result. And because of that, with the accountability and someone sort of looking over their shoulder, both groups lost weight. But the people that were consuming the flax seeds, they tended to lose more weight. So we know that it can help with weight loss and it makes sense, it's filled with fiber, it's going to make us feel full and we're less likely to you know, crave other foods or snack on other foods because we feel full. It's important to know that when you're taking um, ground flaxseed, you always wanna make sure there's plenty of water, just like with chia seeds. When it comes to chia seeds, same as flax seeds, there's actually been reports of obstruction now how that happens is that if you think of like, um, whether it's a powdered form or like chia seeds themselves, when they have fluid, when they're put into fluid, they expand. And so because of that, there's actually been obstructions like in the esophagus where people then have to go and they have to have a procedure called an upper endoscopy where they, you know, the doctor will go in and they remove the plug. You know, it's basically just a clump of, whether it's flax seeds or a clump of chia seeds. So just be careful, small amounts at a time, and make sure that you're mixing it. You just don't wanna take like a whole two tablespoons of flax seeds and try to swallow that with some water. Not a good idea, just small amounts at a time. Flax seeds also have the benefit of lowering cholesterol and lowering triglyceride levels. They also have been shown to help lower blood pressure. Now, how does that happen? Most of the blood pressure medications that Americans are on, they work, to, they work through two different mechanisms. One, they work on the heart as far as how hard the, the heart contracts. And the other way is that they actually will reduce your heart rate. But when it comes to flax seeds, they work in a different mechanism. They actually work to help reduce inflammation. So some of the foods that we eat, such as eggs or some meat, like chicken meat, it has omega-6 in it. Other things that have omega-6 would be like the hydrogenated oils. So they have some omega-6 and those types are considered pro-inflammatory. Not all omega-6s are considered pro-inflammatory, but the ones from eggs, the ones from meat, and the ones from hydrogenated oils are. It's arachidonic acid. So what happens is that the arachidonic acid is then transferred or um, made into, created into a pro-inflammatory agent. And because of that, that's thought to increase blood pressure. So what happens with flax seeds is that they actually reduce that enzyme. They don't allow you know, the arachidonic acid to be changed into a pro-inflammatory substrate. Flax seeds also contain phytoestrogens, which means that they're plant products that act like estrogens. Now in the past, such as with soy, that was thought to be a problem. They thought that people that were eating a lot of soy had a higher rate of breast cancer, but that's not necessarily the case because if you look in Japan, you know, among Japanese women, where there's, they eat so much soy, their rate of breast cancer is actually lower. So more studies were done, and it shows that actually there is a protective, um, phytoestrogens can actually be protective for breast cancer. One study looked at adolescent girls, those who ate more soy, those who ate more phytoestrogens, such as flax seeds, they actually had a decreased rate of breast cancer when they got older. 
Phytoestrogens may also help with prostate cancer as well. There was one study, I believe it was out of Japan. I'll take, I'll put that down below. But people again that were eating flax seeds that were consuming lignans, which again flax seeds contain lignin, lignans, they actually had a decreased rate of prostate cancer, and they did better. Oh, they did better overall when they had treatments for prostate cancer. Another benefit of flax seeds is that they contain lignans. Now lignans are great as far as fighting tumors, all right? Now I'm not saying that you should forego chemotherapy and just do this all with nutrition. You shouldn't. You should have very close supervision with a doctor, be under the treatment of a physician. And then on top of that, talk about nutritional changes, okay? Because there's more and more studies coming out as far as nutrition and fighting cancer. So lignans is probably one of the top foods flax seeds is that has so many lignans. Now that's great because there's been some studies to show, like for instance, there was one study, woman with breast cancer. Both, it's, it's, this is considered a double blind study. In this case, it was muffins, given muffins, and the people consuming the muffins, eating the muffins, the people with breast cancer, neither know which muffins they were getting. So one group of women with breast cancer had muffins with flax seeds, and another group had muffins, no flax seeds. They were followed for a few weeks and biopsies were done and the people that were eating flax seeds, they actually had reduced tumors. Now, why is that? It's thought to be due to angiogenesis. Angiogenesis is the development of blood, blood vessels for a tumor. And we know that tumors, in order to proliferate, they need blood vessels, they need strong blood supply so that they're able to proliferate because it takes blood supply to be able to grow, proliferate, and then spread. So therefore, by reducing the angiogenesis, it's thought to reduce the, the tumors themselves. Anyway, I'll put that study down below. And again, more studies, more studies are needed, but these are some studies to support that flax seeds have more than just one benefit. So how do you use flax seeds? Flax seeds can be used in a number of different ways. Think about something that's sort of powdery. So if you have yogurt or cereal, oatmeal, you could add flax seeds to that. If you're doing smoothies, you could add flax seeds. If you're doing anything like pancakes or waffles, you could add flax seeds to that as well. So they're easy to incorporate into many dishes. Now, there is a concern as far as flax seeds and how much to eat. Flax seeds, like rice, like even potatoes, many of our other vegetables, they actually have cyanide in it. And people are like, what, cyanide, that's not, that's not good. And you may have heard, especially we're talking about this over in Sweden, I saw it on one of their websites, that you shouldn't eat flax seeds because it causes you know, cyanide levels to go up. And we know that cyanide is toxic, toxic to humans, but a lot of vegetables have cyanide in it. So why is that? It has to do with the soil, but nonetheless. So try to consume about one tablespoon a day and not get up to about eight tablespoons. They actually did studies on this and people that were consuming over 10 tablespoons of flax seeds, there was more of a concern of reaching toxic levels. So I'll make sure that I put that study down below. But if you're doing one or two tablespoons a day, it's absolutely fine. And I think that the benefits outweigh the risk because there's so many, you know, there's so many benefits as far as it being antioxidant, as far as the lignans in it, you know, having the polyphenols in it. So there's a lot of benefits to flax seeds and there's a number of ways that flax seeds can help our body. You, in another video, I spoke about Dr. Gregor. I follow him. He's a veg he's a, a great physician who does a lot about vegan eating. So if you're interested in vegan, do follow him. His name is Dr. Gregor. But he talks about 12 foods that we should be having every day. And one of them is flax seeds. So make sure that you go out of your way to incorporate it about one tablespoon a day into many different vegetables that you could be eating. All right, guys, my name is Dr. McLaughlin from Sharon Mac Wellness. Check out my website at Sharon Mac Wellness. I have a blog with many different articles. I have a YouTube channel under the same name, Sharon Mac Wellness. And you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Sharon Mac MD. All right, guys, I'll see you on another video.